Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Liz and today we're going to be talking about how how to connect to TD Ameritrade's API. Now I'm going to go over the unauthorized um, access to the API. So I'm going to use the get quote or get quotes. So bear with me here. <laughs> it's very confusing. So and I have a video, I'll link it below on APIs and kind of how to read their documentation, but I'm going to be going over step-by-step step how I figured out how to connect to this API. I will also link below how another person did it using Python. I am going to be using Power Automate because I think it's simpler and I like to avoid as much code as possible because I don't feel like learning another coding language. So uh, this is what I got for you guys. So you're going to go to developer.tdameritrade.com and you're, you're going to need to register. So you're going to click register here and right here, I'm, I'm just going to log in because I already know um, what, what my password and stuff is. So I'm just going to log in here. And once you have registered, you will have um, an email up at the top uh, and it should show up here. And then you have APIs, guides, my apps, log out, etc. So register will disappear. So then you're going to go to um, my apps and you're going to click here. I've already made an app, but there should be a button where you can that you can press request app or add an app or whatever it may be. And I'm going to cover up some of my information, but what you're going to see is you're going to see um, your app name, which I called it. It's just Liz for the YouTube channel. You're going to see a consumer key. You're going to see the key issued and then when it expires. And then you're going to see your products and it says approved details. Um, you're going to have the callback URL. Um, I just picked my website. The callback URL is just where it's going to send you once you've been authorized, I think. Uh, I'm very new to some of this API stuff, but I got mine to work, so I did something right. Um, you can edit your stuff if you'd like or delete. Um, but the main important part is this consumer key. Sometimes they call it the client ID. Sometimes they call it the API key. Sometimes they call it the consumer key. It's the same key. Um, and this is going to allow you access into your apps or into the APIs you want to call. So the list of the APIs is right here on, under APIs. So go ahead and click that. And you're going to go down and see uh, the different APIs that you can access. So you have accounts and trading, authentication. Um, you, authentication, you're using OAuth 2.0, which I'm still learning that and trying to figure out how to do a real authentication process using to get to the API. But for now, we're gonna do we're just gonna do a simple one that doesn't require a bearer token. If you don't know what that is, I'll explain that when we do that one. But for now, we're just gonna do a very simple one. So we're just gonna do quotes. So here is the quotes, and here are your different methods that you can do to get to this API. So I'm going to use get quote. So I'm going to click this, and it's you're basically getting a quote for the symbol. So as you can see, here is the API documentation. So you can see that, that it is an HTTP call, which it's a get. The method of the HTTP request is a get method. So that's the first thing you should notice. Um, it tells you what it's going to do. It's going to get quote for a symbol. I'm not a um, financial person or very good with stocks or anything. So I have no idea what this means. What am I getting a quote for? I don't know. All I know is that I put in the little symbol of the stock that I want the quote of. Uh, so, and I'm just here to show you guys how to how to access this API because I think accessing APIs is cool. So, really, you can see right here. Here's the resource URL. Here's the query parameters, header parameters, um, and then you can test it here. They have some JSON schema over here, which can be helpful. Um, so, what we're going to do is two things. We're going to log into Power Automate and we're going to create a flow that's basically going to call this API and feed it some information and get a response back. That's the goal. So you can do this using brute force code or you can use this doing Power Automate and I'm showing Power Automate. So we're going to press new flow. So you're going to log into Power Automate with your email and such 
and then you're gonna go to my flows and create a flow. I'm gonna do an instant cloud flow with the little guy here. And I'm gonna use a manual trigger because I just want to um, trigger this with a button. Uh, you can change the trigger, uh, not super important right now. So we're gonna call this, it's just Liz TD Ameritrade API call. Cool. So what it is, is it's just a manually trigger, ignore that. Then we're going to go and search HTTP, HTTP, and we're going to build the blocks of this. Um, you're going to grab the one that just says regular HTTP. So go ahead and click that. Uh, right here, you're going to put in the method. So remember how I said that we were using a get method? So this says get quote, and it says get right here. That is a way for it to tell you that you need to do a get request. So we're going to go ahead and put get. Then we're going to go ahead and copy this URL because it gives you the URL. Paste it in here. I'm just going to pull, um, you can, now you're going to want to edit anything that comes in that curly brackets is stuff you want to edit. So symbol, right? So you can put SLVO or whatever your stock is. I'm just doing SLVO because I own a lot. Of, I bought a lot of it. <laughs> so, um, then you can go in your query parameters and see how it says API key and then pass your OAuth user ID, which is another word for your API key to make an unauthic unauthenticated request. So I'm doing an unauthenticated request. If you wanted to do um, an authenticated request, you're basically going to go need to get a token, which I'm still working on, so uh, we will get there eventually. I've done it before on other APIs, but this API is kind of tricky. So um, OAuth is just a whole nother world. So I'm going to pass it, it's my API key. So I'm going to basically copy this API key and I'm going to paste it into queries, not headers. So if you were to pass a token in, you would put tokens in headers. How you can kind of Google this, or learn more about this is Google like HTTP headers. And there's a whole list of them. Like there's tons of headers, tons of queries. Like you just have to read about it <clears throat> is the easiest way. Then I'm going to go back to my app and I'm going to go grab my key. So I'm going to go to my app. Obviously I'm covering it up because I don't really know what this thing can do for you, but it, this is on the internet. So I'm going to paste this in here and bam, I pasted it in my API key. I know you can't see it, but it's fine. Um, let's see. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back to the APIs and I wanna go back to the documentation because I don't have this stuff memorized. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to get quote. And then um, let's see, Do does it need anything? That's it. It looks like it doesn't need this because we're not doing an authenticated uh, request. So we put in the query parameter, should be good to go. Now, um, to figure out, this tells you your response summary. So here is the schema here. So for a mutual fund, you would grab this all the way up until the next one. For a future fund, you would grab that block. For future options, you grab this block. And you basically, that is gonna be what the response is and what you can get back. So there's lots of stuff that you could get back. Um, I do it the cheater way. <laughs> so you could either copy and paste depending on what fund you have. I, and, and how you do that is you have to do a parse. So you'll basically make another step called uh, parse JSON. And JSON in, it stands for JavaScript orientation notation. Uh, I can't remember. Not super important. All it, all it is is you only use a parse of JSON if you want to use the data. So if you're putting in a request and you're receiving data, we're, we're getting data, and we want to use that data, we have to parse it because we want to turn it into a variable, basically. Um, so basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put in body uh, not actually type that, you're gonna have to use dynamic data to get the body of the response. So this is the body. 
Um, and then you have to either generate the schema from a sample of JSON, or you can copy and paste the schema here into there. So I'm going to do it the cheater way. So what I do is I actually exit out of this. And this is a good tip if you if you struggle with this, is that you have this, you're going to get a response. What I like to do is I like to set up a mail, like an email to myself. Uh, let's see, send email, send email. Yep, perfect. I'm going to send an email. I'm going to send it to myself. And then <clears throat> I'm going to call this like API body. And I'm going to put in dynamic content the body of what I'm receiving. So let's go ahead and save this. And I will get the body of that. And then once I get the body, I'm going to copy it and generate a sample for my parse later. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and test it. So let's do a manual test. Looks like I need to sign in, cool. It says run flow. So it looks like it ran successfully. So it will show you <coughs> that, okay, ignore that because it was manually triggered. Here, it was a get request. This is where they, they did it. There's the API key. And then here's all the data we got back. So here's the body. So that's kind of exciting. There's all this stuff, ticker, blah, blah, blah. So I think we can either copy this, should be the same as what my email was showing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check my email really quick and see if it actually gave me an email with the body in it. Yes, it should be the exact same. Uh, it looks almost identical. So you can either copy the body straight from here or just steal it out of your inbox. Um, it should be identical. So I'm just gonna copy it out of here because it's, it's right here on my screen. So you're going to copy that body. There's the same body that went in here, right? Exact same. So I went ahead and copied that. Then we're going to go back. See, it says test succeeded. Go back to edit this. And then when I, I'm going to delete this, I'm going to actually add a step in between. And we're going to add, um, what do we want? A parse JSON. Now, like I said, this is if you want to use the variables. So right now, there are no variables for the response, right? All I have as options is just body and like a bunch of other stuff. I want to basically create variables out of the response. So I'm gonna press generate from sample. Actually, I'm gonna put body in here first. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press generate from sample and then just paste. So that was my body, right? And then it went ahead and generated the schema for it. Like I said, you can either steal this from the body and then paste in there to generate, or you can basically copy the schema from here. Either way, I personally like to do it by seeing the body, see what I've been getting back. And now we'll go down and instead of in an email, we have all these other options. So I have like asset type description. So I could put like, um, description and then grab the description and then let's say symbol and grab the symbol and then we'll go ahead and save that and that now you can use that data it's stored in a variable and you can use that manipulate it you could do conditions based off of it like you can add a condition like if <clears throat> if this you know whatever uh, quote or the stock price is this price, do this. If it's not, if it's greater than that, do this. And there's just like endless possibilities what you can do with Power Automate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. And then let's run it again and see if my email comes back with the description and then the type and then the uh, symbol. So let's go ahead and do a manual test here. And then I'll show you the email. 
run flow. Done. Um, yeah, so it looks like it worked. And so it looks like it sent an email and here was the body. And then let's see if I got the email. It looks like it came in. And yes, it gave me the description and symbol into my email. Um, it just, here, let's see if I can pull up a, see what my email looks like. So there it is, gave me the description and it gave me the symbol. So you can automate basically any emails with this or any cool stuff. So that is how you basically do an HTTP request for TD Ameritrade Get Quotes API. Now you can do this for other ones. So if I go back to my API, I could repeat this process for any other unauthenticated requests. So if you go to quotes, I just have to kind of edit a few things. So this API, if I wanted to use quotes, I just have to do quotes. Um, I don't even, it doesn't even look like it. Oh, it, so you pass the, uh, you pass your symbols in through a, a query parameter instead of in the actual URL. So I could do this one next. So I might do another video on this one, but it's very cool because you have so many different options because I saw this guy do this exact same thing using Python instead of Power Automate. But personally, I think mine's a lot easier. <laughs> um, like that was very easy. You literally have to do very little code. It's a lot of just copying and pasting. Uh, I couldn't even get it to work using Python. So I personally would rather use this way. And it's kind of like the cheater way for API calls <laughs> because you can call anything and you can, there's already built-in API connectors. Like this connector right here, this email connector, is already an API connector. Like I don't even need to use an HTTP request because somebody has already coded this connector in for me in Power Automate. So anyway, I will link below the guy's video and I'll also link below the classes that I took in order to get gain this knowledge. I took an API um, like introductory class and then I took a Power Automate class um, and then the rest was just reading how how to do this and manipulating it and then beating my head up against the table until it worked. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, yeah, I hope this helps you guys. Uh, when you want to use API calls, I suggest using Power Automate. So um, I'll also figure out how to do it in Python and maybe film that too. But I hope this helps you guys and I will see you guys next time.